In part A, we are asked to determine the current in the block. And we know from a previous chapter that the current that would be flowing through the block would equal the potential difference that is applied across the block divided by the resistance of the block. This is basically Ohm's law. And the question notes that the potential difference is 35.8 volts. And then the resistance is given as 935 volts ohms. So we simply divide these two quantities and we will end up with a current of 0 0.0383. And then of course the standard unit for current is amps. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B it says if the current density is uniform then what is its magnitude? So as long as the current density is uniform then we can say that the current density J is equal to the amount of current going through the block divided by the block's cross-sectional area. And of course we just determined the amount of current going through the block so we can plug that value in. And then as for the cross-sectional area that's given as 3.5 centimeters squared we're going to have to convert that into meters squared. So we'll do the conversion right in the calculation. So we'll put in 3.5 centimeters squared but then we will recall that one centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters, but because we are trying to cancel centimeters squared, we're going to have to square our conversion factor. So just make sure that you punch that into your calculator correctly. And when you do so, you should get about 109, and again the unit will be amps divided by, remember the centimeters squared are going to cancel, that will leave you with meters squared. So amps per meter squared would be the correct unit. So there's the correct answer to part B of the question. We move up to part C. And part C asks us for the drift velocity of the conduction electrons. And we have learned in this chapter a relationship between the current density and the drift velocity of these electrons. This is that relationship right here. We're only dealing with magnitudes in this question. We don't have to worry about directions, so we can actually take off these vector symbols right here. But again, the question wants this drift speed. The drift speed is indicated by V subscript D. So we're going to need to solve this equation for V subscript D. And to do that, we'll divide by the quantity NE. The NEs, of course, cancel out on the right-hand side. So we can see that the drift speed will equal the current density divided by this quantity Ne. Now we all know that E is the elementary charge. It has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. N, that's a quantity that's actually given in the question. If you go back, it says that the block contains 5.33 times 10 to the 22 conduction electrons per meter cubed. That quantity, the number of conduction electrons per meter cubed, that is N. So we're going to substitute that value in for our n. So in the numerator, we'll take the current density of 109 amps per meter squared, divide this by that value n, which I believe was 5.33. Well, let me double check. Yeah, 5.33 times 10 to the power of 22 conduction electrons per meter cubed. They sometimes symbolize that as just meters to the negative 3. They don't put the unit of conduction electrons in there, but the per meter cubed part stays. So you'll have meters raised to the power of negative 3. And then this is multiplied, of course, by that charge, that elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So we will punch this into our calculators. And when we do so, we would get 0 0.0128. Now everything we use was in standard units and we're calculating a speed, so dimensionally this will work out to meters per second. So this is the correct answer to part C. And finally we move up to part D. It wants the magnitude of the electric field in the block. And perhaps we recall that the electric field is equal to the potential difference across the block divided by its length. So we can go back up to the given information and we remember that the potential difference across the block was 35.8 volts and then the length is 15.8 centimeters. Of course we'll have to convert that into meters. So we'll have 35.8 volts divided by that length which again is 15.8 centimeters 
but let's do a similar conversion, although this time we're not squaring it. Again, one centimeter is 10 to the minus two meters. So those centimeters will cancel out. So if you punch that into your calculator very carefully, you should end up with about 227. And everything we used was in standard units. An electric field can be written as a standard unit of volts per meter. You can even see that from the setup. We divided volts by meters. So this would be the correct answer to part D.